everyone, welcome back to our modded create series where Blockdown and I are transforming this island into a create lover sanctuary. In between episodes, I filled in this water ravine and then I took down the hill and smoothed out this area over by the factory. And that's simply so we have a lot more space because I am tired of cooking food and I want to find a way to automate it today with the create mod. And I think a create powered restaurant would be pretty cool in this space. The other thing we're gonna have to deal with today is our tools because as you can see, I've pretty much used up my pickaxe once again and my shovel, but luckily we have some zombie villagers to help us out with that. I've also done a bit of organizing for today and I made some of these drawers for all of our crops that are grown by our automatic crop farm. So now we can just grab all the crops and seeds that are ready and then we can just double right click on the different drawers and it automatically puts everything away for us, which is amazing. Further organization has come in the form of this crafting terminal that Blockdown hooked up to a series of chests which holds all of our items on the entire island. So now we can just come here and find the items that we want and craft right in here as well. And this is really convenient because I'm gonna be looking for some blaze rods so I can start the process of curing our villagers. And with just a few quick searches, we can pull out everything we need to make our fermented spider eye for our weakness potions. And I'm sure you guys know how to cure zombies already, so let's speed through this. We gotta head over to the other Michael too. Oh wow, this must be Blockdown's new storage building. Oh, this is super nice, and there's a sheep. His name's Michael. Anyways, over to Chef Michael to give him that old razzle dazzle. And now we wait. Okay, Chef Michael has onions to trade and he also sells salad, which is great. So we can get an unlimited amount of salad for free now. Oh, and he also buys cabbage and he sells melon juice, which is really interesting. All right, but I do not want to leave you here, so I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to take you over to my house. You know, it would make sense if Chef Michael was employed at our new restaurant, but for now you'll have to sit here as I'm going to start rolling for mending. Sorry, Michael. Something tells me this could take a while. Oh, mending! It's 10, which is not ideal, but that's still pretty good. It only took like 20 minutes, so that wasn't too bad. And let's grab our books here. Now he's locked in and <laughs> he's in my bed going to sleep. I'm gonna add mending to all of our tools, even if they're not all perfect right now, and that way I can go and repair them at the XP farm. And we've gotta do a lot of swiping. Okay, a short while later and all of our tools are fixed up. And now I wanna start the first process of the restaurant and that's figuring out how to auto craft bread. If we search for bread in JEI, of course we can always craft it with wheat. But if we go to the smoking tab up here, we can also smoke dough. To get dough, you can wash wheat flour and to get the wheat flour, you can crush wheat with some crushing wheels. And ooh, it looks like there's an extra chance for every one wheat to become three. Interesting. So I wanna take a little bit of inspiration here from how we made our clay farm last time and get a very basic machine going that is going to turn our wheat flour into bread. And this should be crushing, but I think it's actually going the wrong way. Ah, <sighs> the create mod. I think that should have fixed it and we should be seeing, yeah, I think those crushing particles are actually working. So let's see what we get from this. Okay, we've got seeds and we've got this wheat flour. I think that's what this is. And, oh wow, we got 25 of it. I don't know how much it actually crushed there to get the 25 of it, but it's good to note that we do have to deal with seeds. So we'll probably have to do like a smart shoot into some lava or something. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this all set up, obviously using a campfire instead of the lava for the bread, but I will bring you back when I'm fully finished and we will take a look at how it's working together. All right, so I think I've got this working. So I'm gonna hook this back up to the power and we can just make sure that it's going to work the way that I think it's going to work. Okay, we're stopping here at the washing station. And so that stuff will pass through this chest once it's done. Okay, we stopped at the campfire station as well. So it is getting smoked. The rest of it seems to be going along pretty well. We're still crushing. So I do believe that this is working. The only question becomes, how are we going to get infinite amounts of wheat going into the system? And I think for that, we're probably gonna end up using a botany pot. This world is short term and it's a limited amount of space as it's only on the island. So I think it makes the most sense to keep things as compact as possible when possible for respect for block, but also to give myself room to build other things as well. 
I think it's going to make the most sense to use one of these double drawers, but I've got to make sure that this can interact with a smart shoe. And I'm also going to make one of these drawer guides because I know that there's a way that you can void blocks, but I don't exactly know how yet. So let me just look at this void mode. There we go. Okay, so you can just click with a lava bucket and that'll turn on void mode. Interesting. But we've still got to figure out cabbage and tomatoes and meat and all of that stuff too. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Yo, Michael, where did your wool go, dude? Are you all right? Do you need help? What's going on? A weird Michael aside, we can use this slicer, which is from an add-on for Create called the Slice and Dice mod. And this will automatically slice vegetables. But I have to wonder, will the slicer also slice the raw beef into the beef patties that we need for hamburgers? Oh, I forgot. We're gonna have to give the slicer some knives. So let's make a couple of these diamond ones really quick. Okay, just setting up a temporary slicer setup in the same spot as before. It appears that this slicer is not rotating with enough speed. Okay, I've got to speed this up. Okay, hopefully this should do it and hopefully it'll work this time. Okay, no message when we look at it, that's fine. And this is a little bit scary, but we'll give it the knife. I don't know if we need one of these like funnel filters, but I'm gonna put one here just in case. And then let's drop our meat on the conveyor belt and this should just cut it. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. All right, I just wanna make sure that it'll cut the cabbage as well, which it will. Okay, perfect. What happens if the item can't be cut? Okay, it just goes in and then let's just throw a stack. Oh, okay, so it'll just do one at a time and these knives don't take durability loss. So if I throw that there, it's just doing it one at a time. Okay, this is good to know. All right, now that I understand a little bit more about the tools that we're gonna be working with today, let's jump into a time-lapse to dig out an area under the ground for our restaurant's kitchen. You guys won't believe this, but Blockdown and I managed to capture two more zombie villagers. So let me just get them cured up really quick. But I'm gonna leave those for later as I really wanna get started on the restaurant. I think that these rooms will be enough space for all of the power and everything else we're gonna have to build. So let's get these water wheels set up really quickly. And I'm not gonna make you sit here through most of the stuff that we've already done. So let me get this all set up and I'll bring you right back. Alrighty guys, well, it's actually the next day IRL. I had a lot of trouble with getting this all to work together, but I guess that's just the create mod for you. So let me take you on a little tour and show you what we got going on. The bread machine is the complete same as we built yesterday. And as you can see, we have a ton of bread already from me just working in this area. So maybe we're actually building a bakery rather than a restaurant. And then through this doorway here, we have a completely ethical cow farm. And then if you come up the bridge, you can actually feed them and then they just die by entity cramming because there's too many in that one space. The chute allows the meat to come through and then it gets cut by the slicer and then automatically cooked down by the smoker station into patties. And then we have a similar one over here that was backed up really bad. So I removed the chute with the filter for the cabbage on it because it was like all on the belts and like despawning. It was very bad. And that's where I'm at right now. I've been trying to figure out a way to get these items up to the surface so that they're actually usable inside the restaurant. We can use a vanilla item elevator like here if I can get them all going onto the same belt. Okay, let's go ahead and try to get that elevator in here. I wonder if we even need like funnels or droppers or anything, or if the belts will just put the drops into the item elevator. Okay, well that answers that. The funnel blocks the water. So we'll just remove all of that. If we put a glass block here, I wonder if the items can just go from the belt into the elevator. So let's add our kelp really quickly and get that going all the way up to the surface. And then we shall break it and we shall find out how these belts work. All right, let's get a couple things on here. So some kelp and some glass and it goes right through. This is perfect. I wonder if I can exit the water onto belts as well. I'll have to do some testing with that, but this will at least be somewhere in our kitchen where these come up and then they get put into drawers from the elevator. And this does let us know that our back wall of our kitchen will have to come to at least right here to make sense. So we can try to start thinking about the actual build from this point. Probably gonna have to cut down some more trees and get rid of all these leaves, but that's okay. Downstairs, we still have one more problem to figure out and that's how to get the bread from over here to over here. I'll have to make this pretty again later, but that needed to be one longer. That way I can move this chest down. And that's because the funnels wouldn't fit next to each other. Like there was just not enough space. So a chest there should work. 
and then we'll have a funnel going into the side of it so bread will start amassing in this chest and then we can get our other belt going this way so let me just hook those up really quickly and then the bread should come out of this chest and then go onto the other belt this is perfect and then it goes automatically up but let's remove that we don't need all of that bread to be going up and let me just go get all that really quickly okay and then i know this is a little bit unconventional but what if we just made like a little bridge going across here and if you just try not to think about any dirt falling off your shoes onto the belts where the food is then this kind of works right i mean I don't think I'll have to come down here that often, but just in case, it's a little bit easier to get around with one of these. Coming back with some fresh eyes and letting it go for yesterday and bringing the determination to get it done today really helped me out. So now I wanna go upstairs and work on the actual restaurant after I clean up my mess down here. You know what? I just remember I cured these villagers over here. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time before we build getting their trade sorted. I've been leveling up this guy. He's a sous chef no way he sells hamburgers we will tell no one about this block then will think i made all of the hamburgers and a short while later we have silk touch on this guy finally so i'm gonna buy a couple of books and put it on my shovel and then we should be good to start building okay this bee has been stuck here for like five days and i keep breaking the birch log but he doesn't move so i'm just gonna call him michael you are now part of the michael club you've just gotta be Okay, I think if we bring this wall out over here, we can start taking a look at how the shape of our kitchen and where our collection area is gonna be. I think somewhere here we'll have like a front counter and then we can bring this wall over, something like that. I wanna see if the items can come onto belts. So I'm going to be making like a little water wheel room right here for power. And you know what, while we're doing this, we might as well just plot out the rest of the restaurant. This general idea for like a seating area for the inside is fine, but I also wanna have some seating outside. We'll just raise this entire thing up a little bit and that way we can have like a raised seating area outside. I think that'll look nice. And for this foundation, I'm using some cut tough from the create mod. I definitely wanna make one of those like oversized tables with the umbrellas over it. I just really, really love that idea. I think it'll look great in this space out here. All these cows moving underground is reminding me I should probably get these bred up a little bit more so that way we can get some more product. And we'll just let that do its thing. And upstairs we can set up our collection area for all of our burger ingredients. Now I wanna get all of these drawers locked so you can't accidentally take the last item out and then we'll put them in void mode. And well, that was not meant to go in there. Let's add these storage upgrades as well. So now they'll hold more items. We'll go ahead and get all of our ingredients in here. Of course, we're gonna need a botany pot set up here. And since these don't need any further processing, it just doesn't make sense to grow them downstairs when we can just do it up here and it'll be perfectly fine. Now I do wanna get some brass funnels pointed here because I wanna use belts to move the items through the collection area. So let's go ahead and get this all set up. And with this belt, it should all connect. It does look like it's doing that. And now we just need some power here. And a couple of water wheels later, I've turned this on just to test the bread and it's kind of missing that first spot half the time. It's getting a little bit chaotic. So let me figure this out. Okay, I do think this has fixed it. And we've got some cabbage leaves coming up and this does look like it is working. It's slow enough that the items all have a chance to get on the belt before they go ahead and despawn. So this should be fine. Now that that's all working, I think the next thing I'm gonna do is just start working on the build itself. I don't have a plan for this, so I'm just gonna kinda wing it and hopefully it goes good. I've spent some time crafting up a bunch of things from the cluttered mod and other mods that we're gonna decorate the restaurant with. 
One of my favorite things about having access to all these mods is that we're gonna get to decorate this restaurant in such a cool way. Now back upstairs, I have worked on the kitchen a little bit as I had to get all the water wheels and spinning gears and stuff in for the mixer that will actually mix the sandwiches for us. Using our imaginations here, we're gonna use this record player as a cash register. Then I made this adorable little wooden clock. And then maybe we can just put like an order here sign here. Of course, we also need a menu sign. I don't wanna decorate the dining room too much, but I did get some of these like little hanging shelves with plants on them that are pretty cute. And then I've got some cola cans and also I added a little bar out here with some salt and pepper and some wine. And a fridge would go nicely in that spot, I think. And honestly, I think the kitchen is looking pretty good. Now, the one thing I couldn't figure out with all of this was how to get all of these items into the basin automatically with the create mod. So if you guys know, feel free to let me know, but I just think this is so cool that we can see them getting mixed there. And I've got just a few more things in here to finish up before we can actually have our grand opening of our restaurant. So at this point, I just full steam went ahead, finishing up the decorating, including fixing the ceiling of the restaurant. After that, I filled the entire dining room with a bunch of seating. I hung up some shelves and decorated them with some little awesome collectible items. I processed some rice and got some straw and used that straw to make canvas carpets. And then I brought both of the Chef Michaels over to the restaurant. Then I worked on some exterior details, including some flower beds and of course some pathways through the area. And then to fill in some of the empty space over on the right side of the restaurant, I built two big wheat fields with a path going in between them. That way it would signify where we were getting our farm fresh bread from. And then for our final finishing touches, I built up our table with our umbrella outside. And once all the chairs were in place, I was so happy with how it looked. And after scattering about a bit of greenery and lighting, I knew there was one thing left to do, and that was to name our restaurant McDrifts, after my friend Infinite Drift. I've done a little bit of extra work out here, added some coarse dirt along the edges of the paths, added some lamps, and of course bone mealed the area so that we'd have a lot of lush grass, and this place is looking amazing. And of course, we built this restaurant so that Blockdown could have unlimited burgers. So I think I'm gonna go tell the Michaels that, oh no. Oh, it looks like they hired a cashier and he's just not having a good first day. Well, hopefully they didn't mess up that promo material I asked them to make. And I just got a message from Blocky asking me to come over to his old mining island. He said it was urgent and he really needed my help. So I hope nothing bad has happened over there. And either way, it'll be a great time to introduce him to our new restaurant on the island. Oh my God, whoa, he's been busy. What does that say? Does that say Blocky Airlines? He told me to meet him in the tower and wait. Oh my God, the promo material, the Michaels did it. All right, let's see what he wants. Froggy? Yeah? Apparently we have a visitor visiting the island. What do you mean? Like somebody's coming to the airport? Yeah, I figured get up here, maybe we can spot them. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I don't see anybody. It's an airship. Wait, another airship. Oh my God, I wonder who it is. Oh well, wait, they're landing at the helicopter pad. All right, let's go down there and meet them. I mean, are you even expecting anyone? Have you invited anyone here? No. Oh. No way. How did you get here? I flew. What do you think? You have an entire airport. Didn't you just finish the airport like two seconds ago? Yeah, like literally just now. Wow. So you really got a good deal on those tickets, like an opening day deal. Oh, literally. I got like 50% off. I guess we need to get you through security then. You have to pass the checks, right? Wait, what's this? This person looks like me. That's the grand opening of my restaurant that's happening in about an hour from now? Look at the billboard, then look at me. I don't know if I see it. Well, step right up to our gate agent, Michael here. He'll help you through passport control. Okay, Michael, what is the first step that Drift needs to do? Oh, okay, passport, go ahead and hand it over. And then he says, put your luggage up here on the belt. Okay. Name Infinite Drift. Yep, that checks out. 299 Chill Survival Lane. In what country is that? That's in Swagtopia. Swagtopia, right, right, right. That I've heard of that country before. Mm -hmm. Okay, and reason for visit is burgies. Yeah, I got a coupon. Now, Michael did say that there is a problem with your luggage. It does appear that you were traveling with a water bucket. You know you can't bring water through security. Oh, well, what, what else am I supposed to do with them? I'm always like, you got to stay hydrated. Give that to me. I'll get it through security for you. Okay, if you walk through here and we hear a ding, then um, we might have a problem. I'm your friend, though. Why? Why is why is this a whole thing? We're friends, aren't we? Oh, yeah, we're friends. But obviously, there's rules on this island and um, we all need to stick to them. So um... honestly, OK, you're so right. You're so right. All right. Yeah. I'm going through. Oh, oh. What does that mean? this is not good. You set off the stinky alarm. If you could just stand in this corner, what? please. Right in the corner. Just get right in the corner. Right in the corner. Right in the okay, corner. Right. OK, 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 OK. This isn't very welcoming, guys. All people who set off the stinky alarm need a shower. Sorry. Guys, no, I can't breathe. 
After drift shower, I took her over to the restaurant location so that she could try the burgers. Drifts. What? Where did you get this name? Just out of curiosity. It just came to me in a dream, you know? Soon enough, I got my friends served up with some food and we were outside to enjoy a beautiful day. Well, that was until Blockdown looked at Michael and our cashier just got a little angry. This is this is lovely. Thank you so much for well actually you didn't invite me here. I just came here. But thanks for thanks for having me, regardless. Yeah, thank you for stopping by and trying out our new restaurant. Now make sure you rate us five stars on Yelp. Um I take my Yelp and Google reviews very seriously. I will rate it according to how I truly feel. I gave you a coupon to eat my restaurant and you're not even gonna give me a good rating. I get coupons in the mail all the time for various restaurants. And I've, I've got to be honest, can I give you a little bit of feedback? The coupons are not as competitive as some of the other ones I've been getting. Free isn't competitive. Free. And the discussion was going well until Blockdown made a threat to Drift to leave a review or else. I'm not compromising the integrity of my profile on Yelp. Was the food good? No. I'm just saying, guys, I'm not saying I'm not going to leave a five star review. It's totally possible that I will. I'm just saying that I don't I don't accept bribes. I'm an I'm an expert reviewer. Oh, no, we weren't. We weren't bribing you. We were telling you. Ow. Now that we have a burger restaurant and a working airport on these islands, I think that life's going to get a little bit more interesting around here. But I think that's going to be it for today. I'm super happy with how this fits into my side of the island, and I can't wait to see what shenanigans we get up to next and who's going to be our next visitor. And oh look, it looks like Michael's being trained back there by the chefs. I'll see you next time guys, have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching, bye!